whenever you are mm -hmm. you're planning to update your CV, make sure you go to your LinkedIn and update that as well. Because as we mm -hmm. were saying, like where should I get my remote first remote job or through LinkedIn? You're gonna be applying, you're gonna be connecting. So it's very important to have that updated as well. Hello, welcome everybody. I can see our chats on fire. I can see a lot of people is joining us. Yay, hello. Welcome. Welcome to our second Athena session. Um, you might remember me from the first session. My name is Marcano and I will be your host today. Hi guys. Hi everyone. Uh, as some of you may be aware, Athena, we are a global talent platform and our purpose here today is to help spread opportunities around the world by creating a sustainable ecosystem of talent to connect companies and job seekers. And we have created today's session to share information, uh, opinions, and lots, lots more that you guys are going to be thankful for, I hope. Um, so this sessions are a live round table where we will dive deep into our super exciting topics and you know, try to inspire you to make your next career move hopefully, um, with epic speakers like the ones we have today, um, Q and A sessions and a vibrant virtual community. Uh, we hope that you walk away filled with actionable insights for your professional path. So, uh, for this, uh, specific session, we have a little gift for you all. Uh, we've been promoting not one, but two chances. If you've been following us on social media and been just stalking us, uh, two chances to win a one-to-one -one session with one of our superstar uh, recruiters for a personal CV review. I, I, you know, advise that you actually take part of this, um, you know, yes. Uh, we'll talk about uh, that in a few moments, so just stay tuned because it's going to be super, super, super interesting and fun. And we have amazing people uh, with us today. Um, I personally know them and they're super cool, not just smart and superstar recruiters, but they're also really, really cool people. Let me start with the first one, our first guest, Josie. Yay, Josephine McCrae Steele, one of our three talent acquisition managers here at Athena. She's been with us, there she is. She's been with us for the past two years. Welcome, Josie. Hi. Hi, Sally. Hello, everybody. I'm doing great. Super excited for today. Thank you so much for joining. I know. I've been really, really looking forward to it. And I don't know if you can see, but our chat's on fire. Like everyone's yeah. really, really glad we're doing this uh, Athena session. So thank you so much for joining us. Uh, let's go with our thank second you. superstar, Ajelen Kalinov. Hey, another of our talent acquisition managers that specializes in tech roles. Ashe is there. Hi, Ashe. She's been performing within this role for more than five years in different companies. You know, she's she's pretty smart. And more than seven years in the human resources area, right, Ashe? Hi, welcome. Yeah. Hi, hi. Thanks, Celis, for the intro. Hi, everyone. Thanks for joining. Oh, thank you. Thank you for joining us. And it's not going to be just three of us, ladies. We have one more, last but definitely not least. Let me introduce to you to Tobias Pewer, our talent operations manager. He had also performed as a talent acquisition manager before uh, here at Athena. So, hi, Toby. Welcome. How are you? Hi, team. How are you? Thanks, everyone, for joining today. Super excited to be here. Thank you so much for taking the time for being here uh, with us. I'm so glad you could all join us. It's going to be super fun. I don't know if you guys uh, watched our first uh, session and it was awesome. So, you know, we're, I'm sure we're going to have an amazing time. So, first of all, I think it's uh, wise to let everyone know how the structure of this session is going to be. Um, obviously, this will be an online roundtable. But during the whole time, everyone will be muted. Don't panic. We're not being rude. We just want to keep, you know, everything organized. Uh, the good thing is that the chat, as you can see, will always be open for you to leave comments and questions, uh, you know, that the guys are going to address in the end. Uh, only the guest speakers, obviously, are going to be unmuted, but we'll be reading all your questions, guys. So don't worry. Everything will be answered. 
at the end, okay? Um, after the, the guys give their, you know, uh, perspective on the topics, everything will be answered. So today we want to, we want to spice things up a little bit uh, and encourage you to participate, you know, the audience to participate as much as possible in the session. So before we begin, if you click on the Q and, uh, Q&A icon in the bottom right corner of your screen, over there, we can see the Q&A, yep. Yeah. Uh, to vote, you're gonna be able to vote your, the favorite question or the question you're interested the most. So the guys are going to answer that question first. And you can start doing it now already. It's um, over there, is everyone finding the button okay? I hope you are. Yeah, so hello from Brazil. So some of the questions we're going to be answering today, I hope you can all see it on your screen. It's are cover letters still a thing? Are those? I, I haven't written one in a hundred years. Uh, what English level should I have? What should I look for in a job offer? And what about the company? Uh, what are the hot remote roles nowadays? Uh, how can I determine my salary expectations? How to perform during an interview and with whom you're speaking? Obviously, we have three professionals that are going to be helping with us today. So, guys, while you're still voting, remember, you have to press on the Q&A button and then you vote for your favorite one. I'm going to start with the first one. Um, so we give the audience time to vote. Guys, this is this is like, if I had to do this now, I, ha I would have no idea where to do it. Like, where can I start applying? What should I do first? Like, uh, where do I go? I... I how do I begin? I don't know if you like, Josie, do you want to take that one? Yeah, sure. Definitely. So, um, the first place I would go to is LinkedIn. Of course, um, probably most of you have, if you, <clears throat> if you don't have a profile on LinkedIn, that would be the first go to place. You know, you can activate your notification for the roles. Um, mm. however, <clears throat> we are all here because of Athena and we do have, um, our open roles as well. So yeah, you right. can always check, uh, as recruiters, we are always posting the roles that we have open. Um, right. so yeah, you can connect with us through LinkedIn and you'll see the posts that we have and also the rest of the recruiters as well. And also in our website. Um, but yeah, when I started, I remember it was just LinkedIn and I put the notifications on. So whenever there was a role that was similar to what I was looking for, I would get notified and start applying for sure. Right. Okay. Good. Ashley, do you have anything else you want to no. say? Yeah, no, I agree. I agree with those 100%. Another thing that it's great from my point of view is that even though let's say that you go through our web page and you see that we have mm -hmm. sales role and maybe that is not specifically the industry that you are looking for but anyway we encourage you to contact our recruitment team uh, so maybe we can have a call and you know the market is very dynamic so we can have a call and maybe tomorrow we can have a, a new role for you so uh, that is something great and great skills Right. Toby, what do you yeah, think? Yeah, 100%. I, I agree 100% with what uh, both told. I would only add that, for example, in LinkedIn, you have the option as well to filter through on-site, remote, or hybrid roles. So that's an amazing thing to do as well. However, I do find that, for example, for remote roles, you're going to find locations that you don't know if you can apply or not. For example, a remote role may have a location for the U.S., so mm -hmm. an advantage that, for example, we do here at Athena is we uh, put locations on our website and our roles, for example, in LinkedIn that we have as well, so that yeah. the regions that uh, these roles are published are for the specific uh, locations that we look for talent. So that is something that we that we try to do in order to make, uh, well, everyone's lives easier as well. But I 100% uh, think that uh, companies that work for international opportunities such as us or, or going through LinkedIn is the best option. 100%. Awesome. Awesome. Thank you. Thank you. Should we go with the next question? What are you guys voting for? Let's see. Uh -huh. Okay. How can I determine my salary expectations? Hmm. Who wants to take that? Ashe, what do you think about that? Salary. That's always like a yeah. subject that you don't know how to talk about it. You know, how, how do you, how do you do it? And it's, it can be, you know, a little bit incomparable to someone who doesn't have the experience, I guess. 
yeah, totally. It's never an easy question to answer. So, mm. um, yeah, you need to be prepared uh, for that question. What's never is going to happen is that you go to an interview, uh, the recruiter asks you, and you don't have any idea. So you need to do your research. Uh, in okay. with this kind of roles, talking about remote positions and related uh, with what uh, Toby mentioned, if you are applying, for example, to a company that is in the US, I don't know, New York, what happened, mm -hmm. and this is a very common mistake, is that in that research, people uh, check about, for example, New York salary. So we always recommend to right. check uh, the, the, the salary of your country. I mean, even though this is a remote role, we always check, uh, recommend to check uh, the salary of your country. Where are you located? Um, anyway, after that research, what could happen is that you don't know what to answer, and that is perfectly okay. Uh, if this is your first time working for a company outside your country, you can always ask to the recruiter for some information saying, okay, this is the first time working for me this way, so would you like to yeah, support me with some information or give me the ranges if possible? That is always a great option as well. Um, anyway, if with all those steps you are not sure about the number that you want to share, you always can say that you are flexible. So I can say, okay, I would like to receive X amount of money or X uh, salary, but you can add that you would be flexible to negotiate if possible because maybe your mm -hmm. priorities are, yeah, I don't know, right. the professional challenge, let's say, yeah. or something like that. But yeah, it's a very hard one. I, I think that there is not one answer for, for this one. Yeah, so you you would recommend, like, don't be afraid to ask. Like, it's, if they can, you know, give you guidance, the recruiter can help you with that. If it's your first, you know, experience, it's never bad to ask, right? What do you think, Josie? Yeah, definitely. Um, so my input here would be, you know, we are always aiming for the best. And, of course, yeah. uh, we want to get the best deal for ourselves. But also, like, whenever we are thinking of a, budget, of a salary and we're saying that, have into consideration that there are other candidates as well and maybe they are more aligned with the salary that they have and you are asking maybe way more and in that mm -hmm. case like you will probably get out of the of the process i mean so it's just like having some because of course um remote roles maybe paid in usd and they are looking from the us and then right. yeah we have to be like also honest we live maybe in a different country or not. So let's let's make like sure that it's, you know, aligned and that you right. don't miss a, a great opportunity, right? If you're open to negotiating, it's also good to say it. So, mm -hmm. so yeah. Good. Yeah. Awesome. Yeah, Toby? Yeah. I, I, I agree 100%. And I will only add that always think about what makes sense to you. Uh, understand mm -hmm. what you're looking for, maybe for some opportunities. Uh, your goal is not only regarding the salary expectation, but other things that attract you about the opportunity. So uh, in that scenario, always try to, to show that in case you don't know about the number that you will be expecting, uh, understand about the whole combo that it will give you and why are you definitely trying to go for, for that opportunity, uh, which is always uh, much more conflict than, than just a number. And in mm -hmm. that that part, uh, the recruiter will always try to help you. And of course, mention whenever it's your first time, and you don't know, it's always mm -hmm. good as well. Uh, instead of thinking that, I don't know, maybe, okay, I don't know, so I don't tell it. I, I would go the other way around. I would definitely uh -huh. tell, hey, I don't know. I don't know how's the process. Can you let me know? Give me some advice. This is what I'm making. How do you feel about it? I, I think that's the, okay. the, the best approach that anyone can take, yeah. Yeah, like I said, it's such a sometimes uncomfortable subject when you know when you go to an interview and, and you don't know how to go about. But this is this is awesome. Thank you so much, guys. Let's see what our audience are voting for. The third question we have: How to perform during an interview and with whom you're speaking? Josie, do you want to take that one? Yeah, for sure. So, awesome. um. Whenever we are pl we are whenever we are meeting someone from a company, mm -hmm. um, first I would do some my research about the company, about the hiring manager, about the person that I'm going going to meet with. Um, so it's very important to be prepared. Not not only because you you will feel more comfortable, you know, you will feel 
that you are there and you know what you're going to say to whom you're speaking to. Um, but this right. also shows interest. Um, so it shows that you you're committed to the process that you want to be there, you know, that you want to be part of the company or you want to get the role. So um, this will help it, Like it's a win win for both, you know, um, mm -hmm. and how to perform during an interview. Sometimes, like it really depends. There are people that are very talkative. And in that case, which is great. And we love speakers, make sure that you get the, the correct information out there. You know, that you right. make sure that you answer the questions needed and that you bring up the most important. I think I'm getting a bit cut off. I don't know if you can hear me well. I can hear you well. You're perfect. Yeah. Perfect. Okay, great, great. Um, <laughs> so, yeah, just, just you know, follow a line in what you're saying. Um, we really encourage people talking a lot and, and expressing yourselves and making sure that we get to know you and, and we get to know especially like your experience Uh, but yeah, mm -hmm. make sure you're clear and, and bring things up that are relevant to whatever is being asked. Um, right. So, so yeah, that's, that would be my insight, I think. Yeah, yeah, I agree. Yeah. I agree. I agree on that one. So I would add as well, like, be yourself the same way that uh, there are different, as, as Josie mentioned, there are different people that like to talk more about some personal things, some career, uh, introduce yourself in a way or in another. Uh, the same thing happens with recruiters. So you're going to find uh, different interviews with different people and different stages in the process. So uh, always try to be yourself. Uh, that's uh, how you can start a relaxed conversation. Ask always if there is so something that uh, maybe the recruiter wants to ask you or something right. that, uh, yeah, you want to, the, the recruiter wants to, to dig deeper on a particular aspect of your career, that's always a good question, and understand as well with, with, with whom you're speaking. Right. Usually in an interview process, you will find uh, the specialist person regarding mm -hmm. the role and someone which much more of a generalist uh, knowledge. So depending on with whom you're speaking, maybe you can uh, get a strategy on how deep you're gonna get into technical things as well. Uh, that is a good, I think a good thing to to understand before you you start a conversation and to jump into a meeting as well. Right. Be yourself, I guess. Yeah. <laughs> Asha, what do you think? No, I agree. You need to do your homework when you're going to have an interview. Right. Always you need to check on their website, I mean, LinkedIn, uh, social media. That meeting will be key for you because It's not only the company, uh, the, I mean, who are cho choosing. You, you need to know if that company is for you or not. So you need to prepare right. some key question and try to not repeat what you see that is online. I mean, if you see the product or the service that the company is offering, uh, try to prepare some question that will give you more context about the company itself, maybe related to the clients that they have, uh, maybe related to the team, the work culture, something that will be important for you. Because if you move forward to the offer stage, you need to be sure about that opportunity. So uh, you need to prepare some question as well. Take 100% an active role. Right, yeah, right. So I think don't it's... roll out of bed and go to the interview. Just, you know, preparation is key as always. <laughs> yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. It's, it's, way too different when you see someone that has arrived to a meeting pre-prepared that understand what uh, he or she is looking for uh mm -hmm. that wants to to know more about it than someone that maybe just uh is waiting here uh you have to constantly be proactive it, it's super different and it's uh super um i think it's super grateful uh, and, and super amazing when you meet someone that you can have actually conversation And it makes right. a real difference uh, besides your career. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Thank you, guys. That's awesome. Okay. Let's see our fourth question that we got. Uh, what are the hot role, uh, hot remote roles nowadays? Oh, that's an interesting one. Who wants to take it? Ashley, do you want to go? Yeah, sure. Well, um, we're lucky because today we have so many different roles from a huge variety of industries. Uh, we have a lot of opportunities today, which is great for, I mean, we love working remotely, of course, but it's great because we have a lot of opportunities. Uh, of course, mm -hmm. some years ago, these kind of uh, remote roles were 100% for 
maybe technical positions right. or maybe seniors with, uh, I don't know, plus five, six years of experience. But currently, in addition to what happened with, the, with this pandemic situation, today we have a huge variety about uh, industries, uh, roles. Uh, we work a lot with sales position, customer success, design. Uh, so it's great because we have a lot of opportunities. That's awesome. Yeah, Jazzy? Yeah, totally. I mean, anything that can be done like remotely is, is, but yeah, I would agree. I, I'm not sure if I have to add anything regarding like the hot markets. Um, just like as a tip, yeah. stay yourself like updated, you know, you can get a lot of training online, education online to keep yourself updated with the tools that are used nowadays. Um, so that eventually you could, you can find whatever you're looking for out there. Mm-hmm. Okay, Toby, do you, do you agree yeah. with the girls? Yeah, yeah, 100%. Besides, uh, what one probably might think that uh, there might not be some roles uh, that are remote, but I actually don't agree. Uh, there might be a little bit less or a little more, or, or one should only need to get creative on how to look for those roles. But uh -huh. I do think that uh, most of the roles nowadays can be a, a little bit apart or, or a on, on an end-to-end -end of the scope of the work can be mm -hmm. can be done remotely. So it's just about to get created and, and understand new places where you can look for talent uh, for for roles and, and to yeah. dig more. Yeah. Awesome. Thank you guys. Okay, what we have next, let's see. Mm -mm -mm. Our cover, oh this was a good one guys. Our cover letters still a thing. I remember sweating Every time I had to write a cover letter to uh, an employer, it was like, oh, my God, what do I say? Or should I say this? Or should I not? Do they care about my personal interest? You know, what do you think, guys? Josie, I think I think uh, you can take this one first. Well, this is a very I think it really depends on who you talk to and, and uh, what the role is. We were actually discussing this earlier, and it's true that it depends on what kind of company it is and what kind of process they are having. And also, for example, if it's um, an HR company or you're applying mm -hmm. in-house, you know, so it will really depend. Um, my suggestion over there would be to make it um, short and sweet, but super uh, to the point. Um, right. Because, yeah, just just want to make sure that we don't, we make, what I've been saying, you know, just making sure that the right information is there. Um, and, and yeah, but I just am not a big fan, but that's just my personal yeah, opinion. Right. <laughs> yeah. so, just don't yeah. go about, you know, writing about your childhood and, and just short guys, keep it short. Ashley, what do you mm -hmm. think? Well, um, I agree. We, we, to be honest, I personally, I don't see many like a cover letters uh, today. Right. Uh, right. It's true that depending on the position and the industry, but anyway, it's not something uh, so common as it used to be. But what I recommend mm -hmm. that could be a plus if you don't have it, it's okay. It's not a must at all. But if you are going to add this to your CV, you need to take the time to prepare that. As Josie's right. mentioned, uh, the idea is to have everything like that. I don't like the word perfect, but you need to have, you know, yeah. very close to perfect. Just because, yeah. I don't know, let's say that me as a recruiter, I want to, I don't know, apply to data position. And maybe that cover letter is talking everything about me working, interviewing people. So maybe, you know, that could be very mm -hmm. related to the role that you're applying to the industry. Uh, right. So you need to take the time to prepare that if you are going to use it. Yeah, it's not a matter of copy paste. I mean, I do remember in my time, cover letters were still a thing. And there was a lot of people that were copy pasting. And it's like, this doesn't apply for this role. People, they don't care about it. So tell me, what, what do you think? Yeah, yeah, I agree. I agree. And I will also add that uh, it's a matter of steps. Uh, mm -hmm. When you send a cover letter, you usually send a CV as well. And uh, besides, or instead of talking about everything at every moment, I will always focus on what I want to get from that step. So for example, when I send my CV, I don't want to get the job. No. I want to get an interview. And in the interview, I will be able to explain about my career. I will be right. able to explain about everything that sometimes, for example, as everyone's like 
when we work and we receive long texts, it's like you take a lot of attention and sometimes you are multitasking. Right. So maybe it's uh, it's about how you want to, what message you want to send and in which moment of the recruitment process you want to explain different things. And, and I think that uh, long texts are, are not really, or long cover letters are not really something that made out a lot. Short ones definitely, uh, definitely do if, if you want to do it. Uh, mm -hmm. And also it's a numbers game. So eventually if you're sending a lot of applications to different type of roles might get messy. So you can play with it as well. Awesome. Yeah. Okay. All right. Thank you so much, guys. Let's go with the next question. So what should I look for in a job offer? And what about the company? And what should I look for in the company? Toby, do you want to keep going? Yeah. Um, regarding the job offer and uh, the company itself, I will always mm -hmm. look the, the same as when we talk about uh, keywords, when we want to understand and we want to understand what the job offer really means. Uh, I mm -hmm. will always go, uh, if I'm applying to a role and I know that I'm in the industry, for example, and I want to apply for a recruiter role, I will look for the keywords to understand what they are currently looking really uh, uh -huh. for the role and understand why I can fit those uh, those matches as a requirement. And I wouldn't expect always to fit all the requirements. Sometimes I do, sometimes I don't. And that's, that, that's, that's okay because sometimes you're taking a, a next step in your career and uh, or sometimes you are looking for some values in a company that you really like so yes. i will do definitely my research on the keywords uh and mm -hmm. the, the most important things that are highlighted usually in uh yeah in in, the, in job offers or in companies in websites in everything right so uh that's that's the most important thing for me really awesome Ashley, what do you think yeah i totally agree um I think that when you are thinking on applying to a new job, could could be that you want to change or could be that you want to have a remote opportunity or whatever. First of all, I think that you need to understand why are you looking for that role? Could be that you want to change to have an increase in your salary or maybe working remotely or I don't know, maybe working with international clients. And the first step for me is to understand why uh, would you like to apply to X uh, role? And then, right. of course, uh, very related with uh, what Toby mentioned about understanding those keywords, uh, the requirement, take the time to understand the requirement that you see in a, a shop offer. And mm -hmm. lastly, that is very related to what it, uh, I mentioned before, is that you need to do your research about the company. I mean, if not, you will be wasting your time taking interviews that maybe are not interesting for you. So you need to invest, I mean, even though with the easy apply, it does one click to maybe take, we have a lot of web, web pages to see maybe, um, yeah, reviews or opinions. So it's always um, a good idea to check everything before applying. Awesome. Josie? Yeah, no, not much to add over there and just um, make your research. I would definitely agree with the guys here. Make your research, guys. Make your research. <laughs> Let's go yeah, with the next question. Work. Yes, yes. All right. What English level should I have? Oh, interesting. What do you guys think? Josie? It's a good one. <laughs> yeah. So it really depends um, on the role that you're having, how much uh -huh. you're going to be using English on a daily basis. Am I going to be speaking English, writing? Right. So... Um, it, it's very, it really depends, you know, so, so I think the main part is, is to be able to communicate, you know, sometimes in interviews, especially we get nervous, you know, am I saying this correctly? Am I not? Right. I said it, I, I didn't pronounce, but the most important part, at least in the interviews is to make sure you are able to communicate yourself. It doesn't matter if you make mistakes. It's not that we are with a grammar textbook, just checking if you said it correctly and you use the correct mm -hmm. verb. Um, we just want to understand it and to have a fluent communication, you know? Um, but yeah, mm -hmm. of course there are more, if you're applying to a copywriter role, of course, you're going to need a very advanced level of English. Um, so, so yeah, but make sure for interviews, now that we're speaking on how to land your, your, your remote job, 
um, would be for you guys to not get nervous, not get like over analyzing whatever you're saying, pronunciation, verbs, grammar, you know, right. um, just make right. sure you get the information out there and you are able to receive and, and have this ongoing fluent communication. Never mind the right. errors. Don't, don't yeah. freak out. I mean, look at me, I'm hosting a webinar. Um, <laughs> what do you think, Toby? Yeah, yeah, I agree. I agree. And on the other side, I will add as well, uh, remember that it's not expected to be native. So uh, you will never have the same English level uh, as your native uh, as your native language. So uh, relax as well as the first question that we talk about. Be yourself. Uh, know that you will not have a native English level and it's not expected. And when, when we look for uh, for talent in, in countries that uh, English is not uh, the first language, we don't expect people to be, uh, well, na native speakers, because if not, we won't be, we won't be uh, starting that process in, the, in those regions. We, we source strategically in different places abroad and over mm -hmm. the world according to, to the needs for the role. And when we open roles, we know that uh, we are going to encounter, for example, for some skills, um, some skills might be uh, intermediate, advanced, fluent, uh, but non-native. So uh, at that point is always have in mind that um, it, it's it's a matter of practice, it's a matter of using the English, uh, but most important is not expected for you to be native. So in that point, mm -hmm. uh, you, you can you can relax a little bit more. <laughs> awesome, Asher. What do you what do you think about that? Yeah, no, I agree. Don't panic. You need to be prepared. If you don't use your English skills on a daily basis, you can like uh, repeat and repeat and repeat. And you need to think that if you're having an interview and that interview will be in English, even though that would be in your native language, of course, this is a situation, a situation in which, of course, yeah. you are under pressure, you know, so you can focus on communication as well, because a lot of people focus, as you mentioned, on say about the verb or the pronunciation, but it's more right. than that. It's about how would you communicate your ideas, your background, uh, how, how would you sell yourself in that interview? So it's important, of course, but don't forget about everything related with communication. Awesome. Okay, guys, remember that it's not all about um, how to what's the correct past tense of whatever word. Okay, let's see what's the next question we have. How should I structure my CV and LinkedIn profile? Oh, I think Josie, this was for you, and you probably have something special for us. This is uh, <laughs> yeah, great. Expertise, I think yeah. <laughs> So how should I structure right. my CV and LinkedIn profile? Uh -huh. Yeah. Make sure both are updated. You know, whenever you mm -hmm. are, you're planning to update your CV, make sure you go to your LinkedIn and update that as well. Because as we mm -hmm. were saying, like, where should I get my remote first remote job or th through LinkedIn, you're going to be applying, you're going to be connecting. So it's very important to have that updated as well. We as recruiters uh, check LinkedIn profiles a lot, not only the CVs. Mm -hmm. So yeah, that, that's a must. Like they should go be updated at the same time. And over here we can see the bad and the good. So we have an example on the left and a one on the right. As you can see on the left, there are three pages, um, which is representing yeah. long, long CVs. Yeah. So right. and the other one is one. <laughs> of course, sometimes one page is not enough, which is all mm -hmm. right. Um, but let's make sure we optimize the space. Um, another thing that you can see over there and it's in the bullet points is too long, which goes hand in hand with this. So not writing chunks of, you know, paragraph words that are Ooh, um, yeah. describing. So for example, on the right work experience, you can see some bullet points over there. And this is very uh -huh. helpful and dynamic for the recruiter that is reading these. So, you know, including like the keywords, just as if you are applying to a, to a role, you know, and you see a job description that has a long paragraph, three pages of the requirements that they need. It's going to be like very, I don't know, you don't want to read long job descriptions. Yeah. That don't get to a point. Uh, you just want yeah, to yeah, find yeah. the juicy information that adds value, you know. So making sure mm -hmm. it's like detailed and short, that's great. Of course, adding all the information that you think is important but make sure mm -hmm. you get to a point. That's 
I think that's what I've been saying like the whole session. Just get to no, the yeah, yeah, get of the course. Info all out there. Um, mm -hmm. So on the left one, there's no about me or no profile information. This is up to you. Like you can do. Oh, are you okay? Yep. Yeah, I think I lost you guys. Can you hear me now? We can hear yes. you and see you perfectly. Okay, good. I lost you, but uh, <laughs> just let me know. Um, okay, generally, you know. So, <laughs> great. So, this is up to you, as I was saying, the profile information. That's something uh -huh. that you can add. But, yeah, just continuing with, with what I was saying, don't make it that long. Um, uh -huh. Just every now and then say, uh, mm -hmm. so I, I know that I'm still here because I lost the bit. <laughs> I'm not sure what's going on. So, all good. Okay, great. So, same <laughs> You're for good. the skin. <laughs> okay, awesome. So same for the skills. Um, uh -huh. Sometimes on CVs, people add skills or right. softwares or tools that you use or you have. So make sure uh -huh. they are aligned. Are you including soft skills? Then make sure you list soft skills. Are you right. including hard skills? Or I don't know, you work in marketing and you want to include all the channels that you use. Then make sure right. you include them all together and are not right. mixing stuff like you know right um don't make a mess right yeah and then for the work experience we always suggest to start with the newest one so whenever mm -hmm. the recruiter sees the profile or sees the cv they see what you've been doing and if that's aligned with what they are looking for so yeah start with the newest work experience to the oldest and mm -hmm. i was missing the first point which is no rolled Below Leandro Dominguez oh. on the right, you can see that there's UX strategic designer. And on the left, right. like the person, Noah, doesn't have the, the role or what they do. Um, and this okay. is very helpful. It seems dumb, but whenever we are seeing a CV, we want to know. So I don't know. Someone yeah, why do you do? have a friend. Yeah. Right. So we get a lot of emails like, hey, I just want to leave you my CV. If you have an open role, just have me into consideration. Mm -hmm. And then we open. And it's good to see like, oh, he's a graphic designer or she's a, yeah, you know, so um, include mm -hmm. your, your job title or your role or whatever it is that you're looking for and interested in, you know? Um, mm -hmm. So, so yeah, it's, it's good that it's easy to read and has the most important part, information. Yeah. Awesome. Okay. What do we have here? Tips for your LinkedIn profile. Amazing, amazing. I'm not sure if I'm cutting off. Maybe someone wants to jump in over here or um, you're you're still good, but uh if any other guys want to take this, it's all good. Toby, yeah, do you wanna yeah. take it? Yeah, one awesome. hundred percent. So uh I didn't want what Joe mentioned, which is uh I one hundred percent agree. Um uh -huh. I would I would add LinkedIn itself uh help us with a lot of way of actively sourcing for candidates. So here uh to create headlines to tell about you it's amazing because you will tell about you you will tell about your career and you will start including keywords as we mentioned before so this is how we're gonna find different talent for example if i'm looking for a right. very specific uh for example a paid media a paid media analyst that i'm looking for someone who really needs to know for example some facebook ads or other technical mm -hmm. skills these are the keywords that we use to find the talent and these are this right. is everything that we we, we try to to look here uh, and as we, we spoke before, as I mentioned before, it's a matter of steps. So uh, keep keep it short and sweet as well. Uh, highlights your key skills, the keywords that you that, that you wanna you wanna be highlighted here. Uh, the location mm -hmm. is key because that's as, as well as you can find uh, remote jobs and remote opportunities through, for example, LinkedIn that that you wanna you wanna know the location. The same things happens with your profile. So. The, 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 the location is super important in that part. And the contact information, of course, is how we contact you guys. So uh, that's that's super important. So uh, tips for the profile, uh, I, th I would I would order it this way. And most importantly, yeah, the keywords are, are super important at this point. Awesome. Thank you so much, guys. Do we have something else, Joseph? You want to add something to this or you're good? I think it was super clear. It's yeah. all good. Awesome. Okay. Thank you so much, you guys. So um, 
if you want to keep updated, just a reminder for everyone who's just joining in, uh, if you want to keep updated with all our news and most uh, important job openings, uh, you can scan this QR code with your phone right now and you're going to sign up to receive our monthly newsletter and our job openings, as I said before. So are we all good speakers? Are we good? Let's continue. Nice okay, okay, people. Perfect. Yes, now it's time for the Q and A's. I've been seeing it while all the time you've been talking, our audience has been going crazy asking questions. So uh, we've been taking notes of all the questions that were asked. And you also have now, like, you know, it's been enabled for, for you to, the Q and A has been enabled for you to ask whatever you want. So let's start with the first question that we have. Let me just get prepared. Okay, we have the first one. Uh, Daniel Ganedo is asking, are you sisters? I don't know what that means, but I love that. Thank you. Um, are we sisters as in with who? With Josie, with Ashe? Ashe is not my sister, but I, I love to be Ashe's sister. Thank you, Daniel. Um, Lucas, how to leave the conversation open and don't make the recruiter give up on me. When I sent a greater expectation than the position uh, budget, but you're comfortable receiving less? How to, I don't know if this is, am I making this really, really messy? So are you guys following me? 100%. Yeah. So how do I yeah. understand it? You know, like, it happens. start it happens. asking people that, uh, start. You, I don't, what do you do? You ask uh, people that work there? I mean, what should I do with that? Who wants to say that, guys? Yeah, I would say uh, over there I can take it. Uh, I would say at the very beginning, as we, as we mentioned, first do your homework regard what you want to, what you're gonna get, what, what you wanna get, and uh, with what particular number, if you're talking about salary expectation, are you comfortable with? So at the very beginning, I would go to the interview knowing mm -hmm. uh, which number makes me comfortable regarding the opportunity. Uh, but mentioning that in the in the interview is, I think it, it's good. Like I will I, I will definitely go for, for this number. This is what I would look for. Uh, this is nowadays my expectations, but it doesn't really mean that I won't consider the role if it's a little less or it's lower. Uh, I just mentioning this on how much I, I would like to to be. Can you give me some feedback? Do you think that this might be, make sense for the role? Uh, right. What are your thoughts on that? And, and that particular conversation, I think that it's uh, a little bit, I don't know why people don't like to, to have it, but I think it's good to have it. I think it's good to have it because you're going to start creating some interaction with the interview that, uh, with the recruiter uh, that mm -hmm. will definitely help you during the during the process. And afterwards, if, for example, let's say that you didn't really do it uh, during the interview, you can later send an email, a message uh, and say, hey, I wanted to let you know about this. I've been thinking about this and, and these are my thoughts toward this particular um, topic. Uh, Looking forward uh, to hear about you, and and that's definitely uh, a great attitude to have on, on that part. Okay, awesome. Hope that was clear, clear. Lucas. Girls, do you have anything to add to that, or do you agree with Toby? Yeah, I agree. Yeah, and I, I think that I'm losing um, everybody. That's why I'm coming in and out. I'm sorry <laughs> for interrupting. Sorry. I'm a bit no, you're, you're good. You're today. good, Chelsea. <laughs> no, don't worry. You're good. You're good. Go on, Ashley. Thank you. So, um, yeah, usually um, what we, I mean, as a candidate, we will try to avoid is that we move to an offer and then we know that they have a range that it's twice what we share or the opposite. Of course, to not continue with the process just because of the salary. Usually what I, what I would say is that let's say that I want to, I share that I want to have, I don't know, five USD and the company uh, has a range from 10 to 20. No worries, because usually the company will offer you what is on the range. Because mm -hmm. uh, to start, because uh, they have a range that is built, and of course they have more people in the team, so it's need to be fair. And, as, uh, and from another point of view, if you move forward uh, with a five USD, and then the market is paying 15, we know as a company, and I mean, your company will know that you will receive offers that will be maybe twice or three times, and that could be a uh, risk because you won't be with them for a long time. So usually no worries. There is no like a big risk to ask too less. And talking about asking for too much, as we mentioned a few minutes ago, 
Mm -hmm. Saying that you're open to negotiate or knowing about the benefits or the package in general, those are uh, things to mention that will uh, keep you open to negotiate. So, uh, uh -huh. yeah, don't be afraid. I mean, it's uh, even though it's an easy conversation to have, uh, you can be honest and you can have the same from the person that is managing your process. Awesome. Thank you. Thank you so much, Ajantori. Okay, next question. Um, Anna is asking, LinkedIn only? What about Upwork? Indeed, Dynamite, Glassdoor. What do you guys think? Are those good? Yes, yes, they are. But I do think the LinkedIn nowadays is the is a it is a is the place where everyone is. Um, and of course, right. uh, yeah, yeah. I mean, we we always talk about it's a numbers game. So I would apply. Uh, in many places and, and a lot of job boards mm -hmm. is better than only one. Uh, but always have in mind that uh, LinkedIn is a must whenever you you start looking for a remote opportunity. And others mm -hmm. are super super useful. Uh, but I will always consider consider or have this in mind. It's it's super important on the amount of opportunities, uh, but the amount of recruiters that do actively source for talent over there. So having a, an update an update profile is super important on, on this uh, on yeah on, on LinkedIn really awesome thanks Toby uh let's go with the next uh do you guys want anything to have anything to add no you're good no the <laughs> more right. the merrier so you can use all platforms for sure yeah that's that's for sure definitely uh let's go with the next question it's from rocio gomez gallego is asking is there a reason why salaries are not included in job offers do you guys know that as what do you think do you think there's an answer to that yeah. well that is a good one because um usually that depends on the company you know um mm -hmm. that is a good question because a lot of times uh maybe we as a recruiters i mean depending on the company of, of that person works maybe they can't share that information but that is just because of, of internal policies that the company could have uh but yeah anyway if maybe mm -hmm. that is not published on the shop offer you can ask about that information during the interview so feel free to uh, bring that topic and talk about that but usually the main reason is because of policies that some companies could have awesome thank you guys uh let's move on with the next question because we have 10 minutes left mary says uh what would be a good tip to end an interview well obviously say goodbye uh, and then <laughs> what else what do you For guys sure think? i would add there that I think though we mentioned this in the past, like asking the recruiter, is there anything you'd like to to know from me? Or just, you know, being very warm and, and thanking the, the person for their time. Um, but yeah, I would say just like showing showing that you're interested, that you enjoyed it, that you if of course if you want to continue with the process. Um mm -hmm. so yeah, that would be pretty much it. Of course, it's very important to understand times. So don't forget to ask how the process is going to be, <clears throat> when right. you will, when you should be expecting expecting uh, to hear from the recruiter. So, mm -hmm. so yeah. Awesome. Okay, yeah. let's. Oh, who wants to go? <laughs> yeah, no, I, I would like to add just something else. Um, because if we are interviewing someone, and maybe uh -huh. you see that at minute. 10, that person is not interested, that is not a good experience for you and neither for us. So if, of course, when we share the shop description, it's never enough to understand the context of the role. So we will share all the information at the beginning. But if for some reason you feel that that opportunity is not a good match for you, could be because mm -hmm. of the, I don't know, time zone, the salary, the benefits, the work culture, whatever, you can feel free to share that with the person that is interviewing you. I'm being open because maybe it's not that opportunity, but maybe, uh, yeah, we could have some others perfect match for you in the future. So it's great to be open and transparent about that. Awesome. Thank you. Uh, let's move on with the next question. We have Sergio Nicolás Cortiñas. Is it okay to be a bit nervous or anxious? I feel like being noticeably nervous may ruin my interview. Uh, what do you guys think? 
Yeah, I think it's 100% okay to be nervous or anxious. I mean, uh, looking for a new job and when when you work somewhere, it's not only about the, the job itself. We spend uh -huh. a lot of time uh, over there. We have colleagues that may become friends and right. it's uh, usually usually a, a life-changing or, or usually uh, our day-to-day -day is going to change a lot when we take a new job, mm -hmm. uh, hopefully for the best. Uh, so I think it's uh, it's okay to be nervous or anxious. Uh, we usually are, everyone is, when you jump into a meeting with someone that you don't That's know, harsh. you never spoke, yeah, you never spoke before. So uh, on the, at, at that point, is I mean, it's, it's expected as well. Um, mm -hmm. I don't think that it could ruin your interview. Actually, you can tell about it and it will be okay. Like, hey, sorry, let me repeat this. Uh, I, I thought that I forgot about something or uh, I was a little bit nervous when I talk about this and, and it's going to be good. It's going to create, a, 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 again, engagement with the recruiter. Probably you're going to break a little bit of the ice and start talking uh, right. st start talking more and, and, and that's going to help as well the recruiter to to lead you the, to, during the interview and to ask you mm -hmm. questions that might uh, might help you, well, explain a little bit more about your career and about yourself. So uh, I, I don't think that can ruin the interview. I will just try to know that that can happen, yeah, to anyone at, at any point. Awesome. Thanks, Toby. Okay, let's uh, move on with the next question. We have Ade Ademi. I'm sorry, I hope I'm saying your name right. Uh, do you guys have job offers for people in Africa? Guys, who wants to say it? Josie, Ashe? Yeah, we do. We do. Um, Toby mentioned in the beginning that you can find, when, even though there are remote roles, you can always mm -hmm. find like where they are looking for people, like where they are looking for candidates. Mm -hmm. um, and you'll find in Athena, there are uh, several roles uh, where we need people from from over there, we look a lot for native speakers and in, in the same time zone as many of our clients. So for sure, just make sure you, you check our website. Yeah, yeah. Awesome. yeah. Yes. A, tip, a, a tip over there is going to be uh, whenever you find uh, a country, in uh, uh, for example, in Athena, that you say, okay, we are looking for in a specific country, understand the overlapping time that you have uh, regarding the, the time zone with that country. So for example, if I'm in Argentina, uh, the opportunities for Brazil uh, probably gonna be a mm -hmm. match because time zone is the same. So you can definitely go. Right. The same happens with every other country. So it's, so it's not a lot about only um, some skills, but as well on the, on the overlapping time that may be required. So whenever you see a, a, a role that is published in another country, but you say, hey, I have the same time, so a similar one, go for it. Mm -hmm. Okay. Awesome. All right, let's go with the next one. This is an anonymous. Ooh. Sam Jobs uh, have over 100 applicants. Do you have any tips on how we can stand out from other candidates? Guys? There are jobs Ajit? that have Ajit, Josie, more Josie, than 500. <laughs> oh, sorry. No, 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 I it's good, it's good. The image, so. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> you want to go no ahead? Worries. Yeah, yeah. You can go, Josie. You can, you can, you can go ahead. Awesome, awesome. So I was just saying that we have jobs that with more than a hundred applicants. So this is a great question. Um, I would say that you connect with recruiters of the company that's looking for that role and just send a message like, "Hey, I saw the job posting and I'm very interested in being considered. Could we have a chat?" You know, just mm -hmm. um, just connecting with the people that are involved in that process. Yeah. Awesome. Yeah, anything to add, Ajay? No, totally. I, I, as we mentioned at the beginning, that is something great to do, um, to, to contact the, someone that is working there, the recruitment team, that is awesome and show a lot of interest from your side. So that is a great uh, tip. Awesome, thank you. Now we can move on with the next question. We have another anonymous. Is Athena a good place to land a first job on IT? Well, Athena is a great place to land any job, let me tell you that. But is it a is it a good place to land a first job on IT? Who wants to take yeah, that? Yeah, totally. One hundred percent. We are growing a lot with technical uh, roles. As we mentioned, we have yeah opportunities from so many different industries. But which is great is that 
as we mentioned a few minutes ago as well, we have open roles from juniors, mid-senior, senior, senior uh, C-level executives. So, uh, yeah, we have a, a huge variety there. And to have the first job in technical roles, yeah, totally, 100%. Okay. Perfect. Okay, let's move on with the next one. Mike. Hi there. Hi there, Mike. How to get a job uh, having most of my experience as a freelancer? Do you guys think that would be a, an impediment for someone to get a job? Uh, Not at all. Think think. So. No, I don't think so. I think it's a matter of how you show the skills that you gain during your career. Mm -hmm. Uh, rather than thinking that because of something you, you might not get a, a, an opportunity. Uh, depending on different skills uh, and your career itself, you will you, you will have developed different skills, maybe client facing that other other talent that uh, didn't really face clients during their, their career had that opportunity. So at that point, it, it's a matter of how do you serve yourself and what right. do you want to highlight on, on every step that you go. So for example, if you want to create your CV and you understand the keyword for that, uh, and then go to an interview and, and explain why those situations when uh, you did some freelance jobs, uh, uh, well, gain you experience and are a fit for the role, definitely it's mm -hmm. a plus. And I think it's about how you do you solve your, sell yourself rather than um, rather if you have a not of experience, experience or, 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 I don't know, corporate experience or, or related. Awesome. Thank you. Girls, anything to add? To Toby, no, you're good. I think Joseph's afraid to like start sounding like a robot any <laughs> second, but you're you're fine, Joseph. You've been great all the time. Well, that's it, you guys. It's almost one minute uh, until we are done. So I just, I mean, we could keep going all night, but um, I'm sure you have to go to the bathroom and eat. Thank you so, so, so much. Um, like I said, I mean, we'd love to keep them going, but we run out of time. Some of the questions, though, uh, that were not answered are connected to topics that will be treated in future sessions. Um, so stay tuned to our social media and newsletters because we'll post the date and time of our um, upcoming sessions. Uh, oh, before we go, just a friendly reminder that you can also be a part of Athena if you want. And you can invest in our community round for as little as 100 bucks. If you also go to your social media LinkedIn profile, you're going to find out everything about it. And remember, you all had uh, two chances to win a one to one session with one of our this amazing star recruiters for a personal review of your CV and LinkedIn profile. Uh, we'll be doing the giveaway by email in the next couple of days, so stay tuned. So again, thanks a lot, everyone, for joining us today. Thanks, Josie, Ajay, and Toby for being our speakers. And guys, remember, you can find all of them on LinkedIn. Uh, so Josie McRae Steele, Ajayen Kalinok, Tobias Feuer, you know, just like it says on their... Um, little square uh so you want if you want to keep updated remember uh with tour news and job openings you can scan again the qr code with your phone and just you know have an amazing live join athena thank you so much guys thank you so 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 much and have an amazing day and see you next time bye thank you bye bye bye, bye. bye. bye.